This morning? Just now. We'd both been out shopping. I mean, we'd only been gone an hour and we came back and the whole place has been absolute. De- uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, could I have the police, please? Uh huh. You see? I told you they were burglars. That's 50p you owe me. <laughs> oh, you've got to be joking. I don't know why this referee isn't wearing an Italian shirt. I really don't. What do you mean? Sorry? What do you mean there's 50p she owes you? What do you, what do you mean told her they were burglars? Um, well, there were these four men earlier on, uh, dressed a bit like the SAS. Doing what? Um, well, they were coming out of your front door carrying a three-piece suite. <laughs> One of them winked at me and gave me the thumbs-up sign, so naturally I assumed they were removal men. Catch you and give you the thumbs up, sir. Removal men be buggered. I said to her, I bet they're stealing his furniture. <laughs> oh, no. You've been watching too many episodes of Crime Watch, was all I got. Oh, oh, this could be dangerous. This could be dangerous. Wow! Well saved! Yes! Do you, do you mean you watched them taking it out and all you did was say, I bet you they're burglars? They were ransacking my bloody house! Those <laughs> ninepence to us, weren't they? I mean, didn't spill any crumbs on the carpet or anything. Yes, but you can't go by appearances. That's the way they get away with that. Sort of... what? what do you mean, didn't spill any crumbs on the carpet? <laughs> they weren't in here, were they? They said it was very thirsty work. The one with a tattoo on his nose. Said he could murder a mug of quick brew. Very thirsty work, I should think it bloody was. <laughs> there they were, stripping my house to bits of broad daylight, as merry as you please, and you invite them in for morning tea. What is this? Bus was private catering company. <laughs> And two boxes of Mr. Kipling's almond slices they wolfed back between the four of them. Talk about gannets. I wonder they didn't eat the plates. I'll tell you this, I'm beginning to regret giving them that jump start for their van now. Whoa! Just save the woodwork! Bad luck, my son! Jump start for the... You're not serious! wouldn't start the batch it was flat I mean we were only trying to be good Samaritans good Samaritans oh hello yes uh, uh, I'd like to report a burglary please and two extremely brutal murders you want to disinfect the place from top to bottom just have to leave it to those two detectives now. Hope they manage to catch them. Detectives? When I opened the door, I thought it was two schoolboys come to ask for their ball back. <laughs> One of them walked like a duck. I suppose you noticed that. Well, I grant you they're a bit young, but they were very methodical. Just because somebody walks like a duck doesn't mean he's not good at his job. I've been interviewed by kitchen quackers. <laughs> and look at this, you can't tell me this is methodical. Dusting a cucumber for fingerprints. <laughs> I thought it had milled you, look at it. I looked in the bathroom and saw one of them spraying the stuff in the lavatory seat. <laughs> I mean, what's 
the idea behind that? Scotland Yard get everyone's buttocks in file now, have they? <laughs> Yes, well, now you know what it's like with you and your talcum powder. What's that supposed to mean? Lift the lid on that seat sometimes, you'd think someone had spilt a sherbet dab. <laughs> anyway, can we just drop the whole thing now, please? I've just about had enough for one day. Oh, God! Is the one that we managed to get through these doors to steal anything? Three weeks since carpet's been down. Are we ever going to have these things shaved or not? Sorry. Mr. driving me up the bloody wall. On top of everything else. Well, we both agreed to wait for Chippy Joe to come back from holiday. There's no point in getting people in if they're going to chart an arm and a leg. They've left behind that bottle of dodgy Greek brandy. You want some? Suppose, yes. Still get all the joys of reporting it to the insurance company yet. That'll be about as much fun as a kidney infection. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. Yes, I'm enjoying this glass of glue. <laughs> oh, what a day. Oh. By the way, I've managed to get us out of Meg's wedding on Saturday. So you needn't shoot yourself in the foot to be excused attendance. <laughs> well, you know what I'm like with weddings. It was bad enough at your nephew's last year when that organ exploded. <laughs> Don't remind me. Then there was a father of the bride coming down the aisle with that unfortunate fungal infection. <laughs> And mother turned round and thought it was a phantom of the opera. <laughs> and we're never going to get her to stop screaming. God, that bloody video camera man they hired. Got us to pose under a tree and a bird's nest fell in my head. <laughs> Stood there like Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> An egg yolk dribbling down my nose. I told her a white lie and said you'd been rushed to hospital for an emergency prostate operation. <laughs> I had. I can still get her a present. She said she could do with a decent pair of salad tongs. Perhaps I'll see what I can find tomorrow. Hmm. Couldn't believe that pair across the road today. Every time you go into the house, all they're doing is watching television. You know. It's amazing to think that's all some people's lives revolve around. <laughs> A box in the corner of the room. <laughs> You take it away and you wonder what they find to do. I know. <laughs> Ruth Rendell will be on now. Oh, God, really? You see, that's exactly what I mean. Takes over your whole bloody life. You sit here gazing at all that tripe night after night. <laughs> but from now on, we can do without it. What? You mean, not get another one? Wish you could rid of the damn thing years ago. Give us more of a chance to get out. Do something more worthwhile with ourselves of an evening. Get out. <laughs> Where? <laughs> I don't 
I thought it was when I was over there. <laughs> you don't remember me, do you? Billy Whitney. One B's Topsley Road Secondary. <laughs> My God! Billy Whitney! <laughs> this must be the coincidence of all time. It's been oh, 50 years. God, how? Uh, I'd never have reckoned. No, actually, you haven't changed. You haven't changed a <laughs> My God, Stopsley Raw Day. Eh? Uh, there were some characters there in those days, eh? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Who was that bloke who kept putting his face in the tomato soup? Bit of a mummy's boy, always wore a bar of clava in the showers. Poxy Gates go. Gaskell. Gaskell, that's right, Poxy Gaskell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that mad character with, with the, with the trousers like a circus clown. Remember, everybody in assembly used to stick handkerchiefs in their mouths and stop themselves laughing. <laughs> What was his name? Uh, uh, me, uh... Meldrew, Victor Meldrew. <laughs> oh, God, he was a pillar, couldn't he? Eh? <laughs> There's a big drawing of him on the wall in the girls' toilet. <laughs> I can see it to this day. <laughs> oh, yes, you'd remember him, Steve. Because a lot of people thought that the... A lot of people thought that the two of you looked a bit similar at one time of day. Yeah, Victor Melger, eh? Hey, yeah, he was the right bastard. No, I can't. <laughs> Yes, well, uh, actually, Billy, I Why, think you... Yes, got... I remember now. I gave him my hamster one year to look after while I was on holiday. I came home and found that his cat had eaten it. <laughs> well, I mean, that was bad enough, except he tried to palm it off as a suicide. <laughs> Gave me some tale about it throwing itself off the sideboard into the path of a speeding marble. <laughs> Said his mother must have been crossbred with a lemming or something. <laughs> yeah, I've forgotten every word about it until now. Yes, well, I'm sure it was an accident. <laughs> Stranger, can't get away from each other. <laughs> I didn't know this was your local. Uh, no, it's one of Billy's. I'm not sure if he's here yet. Oh, yes, there he is. Just been up to the hospital, have you? Sorry? And vodka and tonic, please. How is he? Nasty things, prostitutes. My first husband had one. Said it was like... Trying to empty a hot water bottle with someone standing on the nozzle. <laughs> anyway, now you're here, you can come and say hello to my intended. Or are you meeting someone else? No, no. I, I just fancied a quick one. <laughs> hello, love. Sorry, I'm late. Buses again. <laughs> oh. This is Margaret from the florist. You remember I told you her husband was rushed to the hospital the other night with leaky plumbing. <laughs> nice to meet you, Margaret. How's he doing? All right. In absolute agony, I should think, isn't he? <laughs> I would imagine so, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. This is an old mate of mine, Steve Posnett. This is... 
This is Meg, my bride to be on Saturday, and uh, hello. And this is Margaret, who works in the same shop. Pleased to meet you, Steve. Hi, dear. Nice to meet you. So you live near here, then, Margaret? Riverbank. Oh, I know. It's very handy for the rubbish tip. <laughs> and what about you, Steve? Hmm? Where do you live? <laughs> uh, Dunhill. <laughs> Up by the park. That's quite near us. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> Uh, well, it, actually, I know this is going to sound silly, and I should have said it before, but... Oh, what? Meg! Let me show you. What do you think of these? I, um, I bought them in that little shop, you know, just inside the mouth. Oh, my. They <laughs> love these. Very elegant. Not too expensive, I hope. Oh, I I'll wrap them up. Do it properly. Isn't that sweet? I told her we could do with a pair. Cracker Jack, love. I'm sorry, Steve, you were about to say. Well, um, I know this is going to sound foolish, but. <laughs> like another drink at all. Thanks a lot, then. It's lovely. See you tomorrow, 8.30 sharp. Bye, Margaret. Lovely to have met you. You too, Billy. Good night, Mr. Crosnett. Yeah, good night. Uh, 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 actually, uh, I, I just thought... Uh, um, I can get out here and walk the rest of the way. Are you mad? It's miles. It's about to bucket down any minute. We can go right past your road. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Why is that then? My husband's mental case, me. Really. <laughs> I've never met him. I'm only curious. It's a blessing they're not coming to the Which one is it, Steve? Um, <laughs> it's just the next corner here. Thank like you. Right, so. Thanks very much, then. Right, Meg. Nice, Steve. Gone in. Oh. You, you, you don't think I could use your loo, do you? I should have done before I left the car. I don't think I'm going to last otherwise. Mm. Yes. Well, 
I really rather not waking anyone up this time of night. You go on in, you're getting soaked to the skin. I'll be fine. Yes, right. to get up. You'd feel much better if you stayed in bed. I feel worse when I stay in bed. <laughs> uh, <coughs> oh, you're not going to start having an argument with Chippy Joe now. Four hours I waited in for him yesterday. My God, people come when they say they will. because of the germs. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Morning, Mr. Meldrew. You well? Where the hell have you been? We did say Wednesday, didn't we? Exactly. Uh, just enough so they open, but not enough for a draft. <laughs> I said, how much do you want off these, Mr. Murphy? <laughs> just shave them. Just a quick shave. Anything off the top at all? Yes, I'm a shampoo and set. <laughs> and, and some blood highlights and the handles just get over <laughs> I suppose you know you've got a chicken's head or geraniums. <laughs> and your postman's leg's got a piece of drain pipe in it. Only trying to be of assistance. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Say, be careful with this door, Mr. Manager. I haven't screwed it back in yet. <laughs> I was just wondering what episode it was. Still, seen them all a dozen times anyway. because you don't have a television to watch. Miss it at all. 
I'm only too glad of a chance to do other things. <laughs> oh, it's them back. Ooh. The two detectives. They'd probably come to tell us about our furniture. Right. Well, uh, I'm just off to the police station then. What for? What's happened? Uh, I've been arrested. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I will be a tick. Evening, Mrs. Meldrew. I'm afraid we're going to have to take your husband away to help us with our inquiries, as they say in the police force. Well, what's he supposed to have done? Earlier today, a phone call of an unusually indecent nature, traced back to this number, was made to a young lady working as an operator at British Telecom. The usual low, husky voice whispering a stream of obscenities. The line was not a good one, but she distinctly remembers the caller's use of the graphic phrases stark, bollock, naked, <laughs> and dripping all down my legs. Why your husband would want to spread dripping all down his legs <laughs> is, of course, something it's probably best to draw a veil over for the time being, Mrs. Mallon. Suffice to say that by snapping into action at once, we were able to link up this incident with another one being investigated by our colleagues at Morton Road CID. Relating to a midnight prowler who was frightened off last night whilst trying to break into the house of a young divorced mother of three in the Dunhill area. <laughs> the lady gave us quite a nifty description of the offender, <coughs> seen through her back window, and claims the resulting photo fit to be an extremely accurate likeness. <laughs> and of course, once we were able to match up the fingerprints on her doorknob with those taken from your husband for elimination purposes here the other afternoon, the various pieces of the whole grisly jigsaw slotted neatly into place. Is that a piece of drain pipe in his leg? <laughs> Do you believe it is? Right. All ready to go. After you, Constable. Oh, yes. <laughs> right. I think he misses his police programs. <laughs> right. That's about it then, Mrs. Meldrew. 28-inch Nikem fast text. We can have it delivered to you first thing Monday morning. Not until then. Is that all right for you? All right. I have just spent the most unutterably miserable week of my entire life coping with a husband deprived of his television set. If I have to prolong that agony for another hour, let alone another weekend, I may just do something very regrettable with a pair of razor-tipped salad tongs. <laughs> um, I just have a word with dispatch for you. I won't be a second. Sent in 
You're in luck, Mrs. Meldrew. We can have your new television set with you Saturday afternoon at three. No. That's all right. Monday morning will be fine. They say I'm not as face the truth. But I am just I started to deteriorate And now I've passed my own cell by date Oh, I am no spring chicken, it's true I have to pop my teeth into chew And my old knees have started to knock I've just got too many miles on the clock Give me off a chance 